Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Spaghetti Shootout. You'll find in this one, yet again, we're going to try and add in some more exciting features to this round. I've got even a, a new little board here in front of me. The, the, the bomb looking mute button is gone and now it's, it's much more dressed up thanks to MC Ryan. So you may be seeing that. Some people did comment. It seemed like I was muting Mark for fun on the last episode. There seemed may a little have, excessive. There may have been some fun involved in that for me, but I will also say that it was entirely necessary. Gentlemen, uh, well, I should point out, as I do in every episode, I'm Jimmy on the mic. This is my domain. I run this show. Mark and Ryan are, are merely part of my, uh, my communist regime here, and uh, they're going to debate some topics that we bring up. But first, let's step over into the caveat corral because we do need to let you know some things before we get going. First things first, I want to point out some great YouTube comments from the last one. How about that? We had uh, Jennifer Morgan said she nearly let, wet her pants laughing at the mutes. So look at that. See? Love the Some mutes. people did really enjoy uh, Mark being muted quite frequently there. We had Todd B. You guys had me rolling cranial on the rabbit all the way. Put them down quick. That's rabbits if they were the size of a moose. If you don't know, you got to go back and check out the latest episode mm -hmm. before this one. Uh, we have uh, BL something on YouTube. It ends in 69 though. I'm with you, Puffy Vest. Last but not least, Joshua T says, hate on the puffy vest because Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future, raising money for the Coast Guard Youth Auxiliary. Wow. Good stuff. Oh, that's a great movie. Mark I, does have a puffy vest today. He just decided not to wear it for this episode. It's getting hot. I'm just gonna I got, point that out. I was out. cold earlier, and now right. then I got hot. Yeah. Right. I think you'd really I think you'd get hot today, though. The, the, uh, we got the lights. This is a special episode. Also, Eric's ladies always and, hassling me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a special episode because this is coming out. Uh, right towards the end of October here, you are all very excited for Whitetail and just just all the things that come along with fall. We love Whitetail deer hunting. And so all the questions today are pretty much going to be related to that topic. So there you have a little insight beforehand. Guys. That's a deer in we general. We also have yeah. something really exciting at the end, so make sure you stay tuned to the end. It's, it's, like I said, added features to the episode. Don't forget, though, that you can be a part of this with your suggestions for topics for these two to debate. You can be a meatball of the month. Comment below with a meatball specific topic or hit us up on social media or email in to vortexnation at vortexoptics.com. Make sure it's a topic that can be easily broken into two sides that you think they'll disagree on for entertainment purposes, of course. All right, gentlemen, let's exit the caveat corral and on to the main street of our little town. Spaghetti shootout style. Okay, we're going to bring up topic number one. Oh, by the way, I'm just going to say this too. Ryan, uh, I'm giving Mark two points ahead of time because you showed up very late. It's like at least 12 minutes. I did get points for my But I will say I'm going to give Ryan two points because Mark does nothing but annoy me about how much he thinks that you're my favorite. So you all are basically starting out completely even. I just wanted to once, point that out. Once again, pointing out and proving my point. Ryan, you get another point. Mark, you're muted. Okay, so first topic. Best cartridge for deer hunting is blank. Now, Ryan, since you are three and one, your record in spaghetti shootout, and Mark is just a measly one and three, you're going to start out this round. You have two minutes overall. Gentlemen, begin your debate. Well, if I'm going to pick a cartridge for deer hunting, I'm going to look at deer across the board in uh, on the North American continent anyway. So we're talking everything from Coos deer, cows deer, depending on how you prefer to announce it. Cool. It's cows, but uh, yeah, that's fine. I'm more of a coos guy. I'll okay. give Mark a point. Outstanding. Thanks, Jim. Um, very small deer, 95 to 110 pounds, all the way up to the Alaska Yukon moose. Very large animal, okay? It is a deer. It doesn't resemble a white-tailed deer, but it is a deer no less. We need a cartridge that's going to be exceptionally versatile, shootable, affordable, obtainable. And if I'm going to pick just one, I'm going to pick the 30-06 Springfield, one of the most flexible and versatile cartridges on the market. Okay. We can shoot 110 grain to 220 grain projectiles. We can go hyper fast, we can go low and slow. Um, and I think really the rifles that you can get it in are very well balanced as well. Um, great choice, can't go wrong from the plains to the forest to the tundra. Love it, all right, Mark, what do you have to say? 
You know, Ryan, I think that is an excellent choice, but I'm going to look at this through the lens of what people commonly call deer, and that's deer. I know, and technically, you know, moose is a deer. You know what? I'm talking coos deer. I'm talking blacktails. I'm talking Sidka blacktails, mule deer, and whitetails. I'm talking about a cartridge that's good for all those things. I'm talking about a cartridge that's good for all those things and built for all those things all the time. Now, cue the hate mail, Jim, which I think is actually unwarranted. I'm going with the 6.5 Creedmoor. That's right. I said oh. 6.5 Creedmoor. Points well, no for boldness. Why? Because that is a great cartridge for deer, and it's a great cartridge for small statured people all the way up to larger frame people. It's easy to shoot. It's got mild recoil. It's renowned for accuracy. You want to use it for short range? Great. You want to use it for some longer range shots? You can do that too. And guess what? Oh, it fits perfectly in a lightweight mountain rifle, which happens to be my favorite kind of rifle. It's light, it's handy, you can get it in a short action. I'm going with the 6.5 Creedmoor. Well, how about that? Okay, gentlemen, good first round, good first round. Ryan comes out ahead at this point, 18 to Mark's 15. So uh, Mark's already giving me, giving me that look. Look, Mark, there's, there's a number. I just don't, I'm, it's a look up, I don't think anybody's surprised. We got a lot more topics to go here. Let's go. Okay, let's go. I don't hear a peep out of Ryan's mouth. Why would you? Topic number two. Butt out. Serious tool for deer hunters or nah? I love how nah is like a common theme that actually originates from like the first spaghetti shootout, like where nah, it's just like, it's just the way you ask things now. It is. Everybody knows what you're getting at. I like it. Mark, you are going to start off this topic because Ryan just started off on the last one. Let me reset our two-minute clock. Begin. I tell you what, Jim, I would say with this thing, uh, this is a, a topic or an issue or a tool where you're either in or you're out. Good pun. And I got to say yeah, that although points, I yeah. have used this tool on one instance because people that love it swear by it. I was hunting with the person. He's like, you know, we're fiddling with the deer. And he goes, no, 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 no. You got to use this thing. It's pure magic. So then I went to go use it. I don't feel like it was pure magic. In fact, I didn't like the way I felt while I was using it. And frankly, it didn't work very well when I did use it. So really? I, when, it, when it comes to the butt out tool, uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to say some other things with it. After you use it, it's only used for one thing. So number one, it's got single purpose. You're using it for one thing. I don't like to have things in my kit that are only good for one thing. And then after you put it there, where do you put it? Good question. Is it my turn? It's your turn. It A is. A couple things. I'm going to address some things that Mark said. I don't like to pack things in my kit that are only good for one thing. Having traveled and hunted with Mark before, I will tell you he packs one of 1,000 things that he'll <laughs> never use. A lot of them are good for two things, though. Or not, but that's fine. Um, number two, I've seen Mark field dressed deer. I'm surprised he didn't care for the butt out because he could use all the help he could get. Um, when we're speaking to the merits of the tool itself, it is actually quite functional if you use yes. it the correct way. Okay. The trick is, is before you use the butt out tool and you insert it into the rectum and then begin twisting it, make sure that you kind of cut around the rectum itself. We want to loosen that connective tissue that's actually holding, the, well, what is the, the, I guess the external part of the rectum, the sphincter. We want to break that loose and then we can pull it out, withdraw what is the colon and part of the large intestine and then get the poop out of the way and then finish the rest of the job. It actually works pretty damn if good. If you're going to go in with your knife, why don't you just finish the job? It's undeniably easier, and it works on doe deer. Two things. Ooh. Well, Ryan, Yo. you did pretty good on that. You said rectum so many times. I'm just going to mute you because I just, I just need that for a second. Uh, but <laughs> Ryan does come out ahead after round two. 31 to Mark's 27. So actually, I feel like we're, we're, we're still in a pretty similar spot as we were at the end of Topic number one. Now, we are coming up on topic number three, which is, of course, courtesy of our Meatball of the Month, our new one. Meatball, meatball, meatball. 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 Last time, it was the Duke of Tank royalty, in fact. This month, who we have here is James Dendy. It's a Dendy of a name. Dendy. It's a it's dendy, dendy name. Isn't it? uh, so we'll flash up topic number three here. Now, James Dendy, thank you for this one. This one's going to be fun, I think. What is the largest animal your opponent 
could beat in a fight without weapons. So uh, let's see, Mark just started the last one. Ryan, you are going to start this two minute round. I should also point out briefly, again, if you want your question, you have something just burning in your mind, you wanna hear these two debate just like they're about to, make sure you're submitting some topics for debate for Meatball of the Month in the comments on YouTube or of course uh, via email at vortexnation at vortexoptics.com. So with that said, Also, Ryan, Ryan, you can't go with rectum again on this one. Yeah, yeah. You've said that, I feel like, enough times. I'm done. Unless it's really fitting. <laughs> unless it's really important. Right, right. Okay, two minutes begin. Normally, I would take this opportunity to pick on Mark. Um, a couple things we should note. He's a father. He does possess dad's strength, and that gives him an upper hand. There's no question about it, but it is Mark. And so if I really thought about this, and I thought about animals that Mark could fight and win, I'm going to go with, like, a woodpecker. Possibly a medium-sized squirrel. I think, I think we have to define what without is, weapons, a squirrel. Yeah, I think he could handle his own. I, what I what we have to understand here is what what do we define as winning the fight? Has Mark <laughs> has Mark he has completely the destroyed death, like the, the expiration, animal, or has he gotten safely away? And I think if we're going with well, safely away, he fought off that creature. We're looking at like a harrier, downy woodpecker, and like a medium-sized squirrel. Not even like a pile So long. Like a, no, you know, like the bigger uh, ones. We're talking. Eh, it's got like a three-inch. Uh, cover your eyes, bro. Go All ahead, right. Mark. All right, Jim. Uh, frankly, I never wanted to bring this up. Uh, it was shocking to me when I saw it, and quite frankly, I'm, I'm just still reeling from it. Um, I'm gonna go with a puppy for Ryan, and and I say that because one time I saw him hit a puppy. Yeah, I saw him do oh. it. It was absolutely horrible, and uh, I don't think any of us, uh, I'm sorry, Ryan, it just it was a little bit unsettling. That's and you know what? Say. That dog learned. Oh, God. It was a lie. I was lying, Ryan. You never did that. I made, I made the libel? whole thing. I made the whole thing up, Jim. I Mute. Mute. He's been muted. You can't just blatantly lie on Spaghetti Shootout. What is this? Mark, you know, if we were in a real Wild West town, one like Truth or Consequences, New Mexico? Where we did go through. Truth or Consequences, you let me tell you what. Consequences? There would be. A town like that. I did a great Walmart, I will say. With all Mark, the solar panels. I can't even, I mean, I gave you like two points, I guess, just because it started out kind of interesting, but I, I, no more points were awarded. You got muted. Fair enough. What I couldn't happened? I couldn't tell a lie. I wanted to, I wanted to ruin his reputation. Because I'm so damn jealous. You know what you should have done? You should have picked cows. I'm mortified of cows. It stops there. There's no way Why I could be scared of cows. Because I got the crap kicked out of me by one, and ever since I've never been able to look them in the eye and assert any kind of dominance. Well, uh,. We should point out, of course, James Dendy is going to win our prize pack, which I haven't even mentioned. I'm only just getting at the, the, the notoriety of being the meatball of the month. But, of course, James, you are going to win a Crossfire 10x42 set of binoculars. You're going to win a $100 gift card to our apparel merchandise section on the website. And, of course, you're going to get that glorious, glorious cameo from Mark Boardman. So uh, I apologize. And the prestige. The prestige. I apologize to the people behind our fourth wall who were probably trying to signal to me that I should have mentioned that earlier. But those are some of the uh, some of the, the riches with which you will be spoiled. All right. Topic number four, gentlemen. Uh, I should point out again, we are Ryan Muckenhern, 39 points. Mark, 30 points. I can't even believe that you actually gained a couple points after that tremendous display. A little bit surprised too. Of as long slander. As, as long as we're, you know, I'm sorry I lied. Sorry, I lied. Okay. Well, how about this? Time to make up for that. The most iconic deer rifle ever made. Now, we are talking rifle. Remember, we talked cartridge earlier. Most iconic deer rifle is, Mark, you will begin our two minutes. Go. You know, Jim, for this one, I'm going to have to go with the Remington 760 slash 7600, which kind of replaced Slash did replace the 760. This is a pump action shotgun. To me, this was action shotgun rifle. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah, you know, take take Speed two. bump, speed bump. Yeah. Uh, pump action rifle. It was actually my first deer rifle chambered in the 30-06. Ryan, a great deer cartridge. Now, I would say, though, as a youth, you know, getting back to my selection earlier of the 6.5 6 Creedmoor, 30-06 was a little bit too much gun when I was 12, I felt. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I love that gun. It's a pump. It's fast. It's handy. Like I said, I grew up in western Washington. It was a very popular gun over there. To me, it just says deer hunting is very popular here in the Midwest. You look at the 7600 now, what's it available in? 243, 308, 270, and 30 If those cartridges don't say deer rifle, I don't know what does. Mark, right. that was outstanding. Thank you, Ryan. It was on my list. Oh, no kidding. Huh? Yeah. I'm going to, however, go with the iconic Winchester Model 70 and because it is, in fact, the rifleman's rifle. And here in North America, our top pick for big game are deer. Whether that is whitetail, cows or coos, blacktail, mule deer, elk, caribou, or moose, deer rifle. Uh, so the, I think I lost a point. Because you, you keep saying cows or coos, there's one. There's one, you're right. Um, the Winchester Model 70, the rifleman's rifle. You can get a chambered in 270, 30 odd six, 300 Win Mag, 264 Win Mag, 308, 243, 708. A whole smattering of different cartridges. When we see those old tin type type photos, the black and whites, and and you see a, a fella or a group of fellas hanging out with a whole bunch of you know rifles at the uh, low ready, and there's a bunch of deer hanging on the pole. Often you're going to find a Model 70 in one of those pictures, and they're just fantastic. Not wrong. Both good choices. Yep. I will say, Mark, I'm surprised you didn't bring up the old Browning B A R. You know, the, the, the BAR is a good one. I just feel like that 7600 or the 760, like I said, it, it's a pump, it's fast, it's handy. It's good. It just screams deer hunting. It's good stuff. It's kind of the everyman's deer rifle, too, in comparison with the BAR. Not too expensive. No. Nope. Right. Free-floated barrel, pretty darn accurate, mm -hmm. gets the job done. All the things I should have said about a minute ago. I'll give you a point. All right, so coming up on topic number five. Topic number five, with Ryan leading 45 to 39, is, here we go, Mark, here's your chance, tree stand, saddle, or ground blind? Ryan, you'll start this two minutes. Please begin. Well, tree stand, saddle, or ground blind? I suppose it depends on which type of deer we're hunting. Jim, because sometimes the deer that we hunt, let's say we're in the American Southwest and we're hunting those small desert deer that you and Mark have chased before. Okay. You're going to hunt them on foot or you're going to hunt them over a drinker tank, in which case a ground blind would be the best choice for you. You're not going to find a tree out there that's going to support a stand, nor I'd would it support a stand. say the only water we found, Jim, was actually had trees all around it. Thanks, Mark. Um, Fair point. Yeah, Fair sure. Point. Fine, fine. Point, Mark. I get it. Uh, outstanding. Uh, tree saddles are great. They're super lightweight. They're super fast. Um, you can get into a lot of different trees with them. I think it's a great choice. Uh, a tree stand, they come in so many different shapes, forms, iterations. I think they're probably the most versatile. You can get a ladder, you can get a hang on, you can get a climber. If I'm going to pick one way to hunt deer in North America, it's a deer stand. Okay. Yeah. All right, Jim, I see what you guys are trying to do here. You're giving me three different options trying to trip me up and you probably have now like ryan alluded to i feel like all three of these platforms these hunting stand platforms shine in different areas i mean i love my lightweight climber i love to go on a hang on but if you said pick one as my counterpart here like she says answer the question which i think if we review the tape i'm not sure if that actually happened uh i'm going to go with oh my gosh uh, i can't believe i'm saying this i'm gonna go with the saddle and i'm just gonna say because I three feel points like for making a works. decision for once everywhere all the time i think it's a great option i don't always think it's the best option but it's the one that's going to work all the time you want to go light and fast you want to go uh deep into the back country but you still want to carry that stand it's going to fit in your backpack you can put it in a backpack that's big enough that you can still haul the deer out with all your stuff i don't hunt out of a saddle all the time i hunt out of a saddle 50 percent of the time but if i was going to pick one that's going to be it all right mark and I, I'm not doing this just to bother it you. It seems intentional. It wasn't intentional. I was awarding points as I saw fit. But we did come down to 50 points. Ryan to Mark's 49. 
You were doing you were doing pretty good. You were doing pretty good. It's really hard to come back from a, a, a huge lie, I will say. I've been overall. living a lie. Now, the thing is though, gentlemen, before we get into last cracks and all that stuff, there is another aspect or component to this spaghetti shootout. One that I'm listening. One that you guys just weren't even probably ready for at all. And that's trivia. It ain't over yet, Mark. Okay, now uh, I'm looking at my printout here. Yes, I did actually get one. So, rapid fire trivia. There's going to be five questions. Each are worth three points. Family feud style. Okay, so I'm going to actually move. Is this consolation trivia, Jim? Like, God, what are we going to do? No, no, this is not consolation <laughs> trivia. I'm going to move this. Now, uh, while I set this up, this is you know this this oh. comes as. Uh, oh, okay. Comes as yet, and we're always trying to push the boundaries here with the spaghetti shootout. Am I right? Am I right? So, a lot uh, of exposed wires this. last time, so I feel like this is a little bit more less OSHA. exposed wires, less spread boards, that sort of thing. Now, the Family Feud style nature of this means that I'm going to ask the question, and you guys are going to hit a buzzer, a button, in order to you know be the first to answer that question. Okay, so that is the blue one. If you hit the green one, you will mute yourself, and I'm not going to undo that. You're just muted. Okay. <laughs> This is important. Listening to instructions. So if you hit the green button, the green button mutes. The green button mutes. <laughs> okay, so Ryan's muted, courtesy of Mark. Now, uh, if the person guesses wrong, the other person gets the chance to answer and then can gain the three points. Um, that's just how it works, plain and simple. Okay, are you ready? Do we have a hand Remember, placement position? Is there uh, any proximity ruling? Can I be up here? You, no. Okay. Why so would you even? Here. Why would I even have to tell you that? You well, can't you be never up know. There. I'm a former three gunner. You got to figure out how oh, to game you it. You game and oh. son of a gun. Yes. What? I'm get lots of input here. I would have lost a point if I said something like that. Okay. Trivia question number one. Which state has the most Boone and Crockett entries into the United States? Iowa. You are wrong. <laughs> Mark, would you like Do to answer the question? Do I have to hit my question? button? No, you just get the chance to answer the question. Wisconsin. Mark is correct. Wisconsin. Nice. He gets three points. Wisconsin, with 1,822 entries and six counties in the top 20, Wisconsin has produced more record whitetail bucks than any other state. I don't think you awarded him three. Mark is correct. Wisconsin. Nice. He gets three points. I think you gave him one. Oh, I hit the three button. Thank you. Look at that. Sportsmanship. Ryan, my goodness. Thank you. Listen, it'll be... Ryan the, gets a point I'm just so happy to see that we were tied. It'll be I the, didn't even pay attention. Ryan gets a point if for sportsmanship. If I don't make sure it's not clean and clear and under control, then I hear about it later, and it's a situation. Oh, my God. I'd like to just reference real quick the, the fourth wall. Am I getting a thumbs up? Are we doing this right? Okay, thumbs up. Good, good. <laughs> so, trivia question number two. Now, you cheating mofo over there. You just read it behind me. I didn't get a chance to get it out of my mouth. So I'm actually going to hit the button to display it on the screens behind me after I read it. Uh, oh, never mind. Wait, you know the question what the, already? What's with the hand raising? What do you think this is? Third Try grade. Be polite. Okay. What is the average distance between two matching sides of shed antlers? I think that goes to Ryan. I saw Ryan's hand first. 22 yards. Negative. Okay. Mark, would you like to try and answer? I'm going to say six feet. No. Incorrect. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so neither of you got it. I don't know if we want to do like a closest. I'll give Ryan a point just for being closer, even though he wasn't exactly spot on. That puts you guys tied at 52 points. I'm not sure if that's exactly how the rules were intended to be done, but I, again, get to make the rules. The answer is 93 yards. Holy smokes. So That's why I never find two. Now, I should point out. I was out, kind of thinking it was like, I was trying to think it was like some trick question. Like, like maybe there's some like odd number of like match sets that are just laying side by side I, that I should, people might. Right, might throw it off. I should point because, out. Because like if you're going to find two horns. You think they'd be right there. Let me give you guys this little bit of uh, added color. Brian Peterson of the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Mm. Reported that Carney. in a collection of 75. Carney. Jim. Carney? Nebraska people will get mad. It's Carney. Nebraska folks, I do apologize. I've been there many times. Reported that in a collection of 75 matched antler sets from Nebraska's Platte River Valley, the average distance between them is 93 yards. So I'll point out that this experiment, while done by 
a researcher, only consisted of 75 match sets in one specific region of the country. So that's what we're going off of. But you know, grain of salt. Hey. It's the best data point we've got. It's the best data point we got, you know? Thanks a lot, Brian. Maybe he's a listener. Appreciate you doing that research. Okay, question number three. The iconic Jordan buck was killed in what Wisconsin? Ooh, Ryan again. Quick on the draw. Okay, trivia number three. Ryan, what's the answer? Lafayette. Incorrect. Mark, would you like to get this one? Can you? The iconic Jordan buck was killed in what Wisconsin county? (sighs) Mark, you should know this one. I know. It starts with a B. I'm going to give you just off the top of my head five more seconds. Iron. Uh, Iron? Mm. Like the ore? No, like Iron County. Okay, uh, incorrect. So I'm not going to award any points the, here because I don't I actually know my Wisconsin counties well enough to figure out who is closer. But the answer is Burnett County. Burnett! Oh. On it. I just, it was, so then I just picked a county that I remembered. Uh, Mark, you should remember this because it's near Danbury, specifically. I know. Home it, of the I iconic knew it was where film, we were. Home of the we iconic film, film Boats and Bows. The buck was killed in November 20. <laughs> 1914 by James Jordan. James Jordan. We have a James Jordan of our own uh, who you might get if you call in for technical support here at Vortex. Jordan gave the buck to a taxidermist who later moved away, leaving no trace of the deer. In a strange twist a half century later, a distant relative of Jordan bought a massive buck at a rummage sale in Sandstone, Minnesota. The rack was later determined to be long to the original Jordan buck where it can now be found at Bass Pro Shop's King of Bucks collection in Springfield, Missouri. That's a fantastic. That should have been a gimme for me. I just I knew it was B, had your shot. but I had your shot. Didn't have the rest of it. Okay. Trivia question number four. Hopefully you folks are I need enjoying to be these. smarter. Yeah, right. All right. Hopefully you folks are enjoying these trivia questions. Uh, and uh, we're gonna move on now. We have How many five total. Five total. How so many? there's so that two was more. Two more. If you can using the proper, you know, deduction, math. Trivia question number four. How long are Oh, okay, right. I read that as a different word. Okay. How long are white-tailed does pregnant for? Ryan, again, Mark, you got to be faster. Can I just test this? Mind if oh, I like... Oh, no, it's just don't bother with the light. If you're first, you're first. It, 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 it picks it up. Plus, I can see. <sighs> Ryan? 240 days. Oh, my gosh. My sheet says months here. Can you give me months? What is 240 divided by... <laughs> Uh, okay, what do we approximate, you know, 30 days, 240 over 30. No, you are incorrect. Okay. Mark, would you like to take this one over? I'm going to say seven months. Very close. You are closer than Ryan was, so you get a point. Yes. Was it six months? I almost six said and a six. half. God, I almost Very said specific. six. I guess it would have been... 240 uh, days came out way. to be about eight months when I did my little phone math there. Deer hunters speculate when the whitetail rut will occur every year. Knowing does are pregnant for six and a half months means they were bred during the first or second week of November. This means the rut happens the same time every year, regardless of weather conditions or moon phase. I agree with that statement. All right. The original number in my head was you know, a little, here, little you know, bit of radio here's, silence here's, there. Well, here's what, I, here's what I'll say. I think in. that those other variables that you talked about affect daytime activity. So the rut is still happening regardless, but I think that some of those other oh, things right. affect daytime activity. When you uh, yeah, just because you're rutting doesn't year. mean you got to do the same thing every year, you know? Yeah. You might want to switch it up a little bit. Get a little weird uh, with it. Get a little weird sometimes. Okay. Now, uh, for those who are just listening, it is Mark 53, oh, Ryan 52. Last trivia question. What's the average home range of a whitetail buck during hunting season? Mark, you get this one first. During hunting season? During hunting season, average home range of whitetail buck. Three miles. Incorrect. Ryan, would you like to take this one? Now, Mark said three miles. Are we talking square? Square. Square miles. Uh Uh, I'm going to say... 4.6 4.6 square miles. No. It's going to be less than three. I'm going to give Mark a point for being closer. 
answer, about 650 acres, which is one square mile. No kidding. One square mile, huh? According to a study by Penn State, the average home range of a white-tailed buck increases from about 400 acres to about 650 acres during October and November. The increase in home range is likely motivated by a buck's interest in breeding and communicating or getting weird, like we mentioned before, with other deer through rubs and scrapes. Interestingly, a doe's home range shrinks from 400 acres to under 200 acres during hunting season, a 48% decline. My stars. They're just trying to stay hid. Like, there's <laughs> too much maybe, going on out there. Maybe if I don't move. It's like the purge. All right, well. Unbelievable. Mark, for all that complaining, I know. your you knowledge, did it. <laughs> you did it. Your knowledge is what brought you back into this one. So you didn't even have to lie in those trivia questions. That's the real lesson. Back. That's the real lesson learned here today, Jim. That is, that is. At least you apologized and then ultimately you came back. And you beat Ryan. Congratulations. Now you are, what is your record now? Two and three? Two and three. So, yeah, maybe you can get back on that 500 track. Don't call it a comeback. That's a good song, right? Um, okay, Mark, you get a last crack. It is one minute. We've got the thing up on the screen. Now, why don't you go ahead with that last crack? Jim, uh, I'll be quite honest. I didn't prepare anything for today's last crack because I didn't expect to win. Now also, what makes it difficult to talk is Brian's hand slowly creeping its way <laughs> towards me for no apparent reason at all. What I will say is my last crack today is don't lie, kids. It is not worth it. You'll feel terrible. I felt terrible the whole time. I was I accused you of horrible things. And it just uh, it wasn't worth it. So the other thing is we talked about our favorite, one of our favorite topics today, deer. It is deer season, everybody, and uh, thank goodness it's here. Get out there, be safe, hunt hard, have a good time. Love it. Wow. Love it. There you have it, everybody. The latest uh, version or whatever it is of Spaghetti Shoot. I think we're on episode five or something. There's that last crack. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed this. We, of course, added the trivia. Uh, some of our, our people behind the fourth wall are, are literally, they're buckled over after that just tremendous last crack by Mark. Um, and a violation of personal space. And, and a little personal space uh, violation. Never hurt. James Dendy, thanks a ton for submitting that great debate point that we used for this month's Meatball of the Month. Don't forget you, listener, person that we're speaking to, not sure who you are out there. <laughs> you could be part of this by submitting a tremendous debate topic to us with the subject line, Meatball, that these two could debate. And you could win all those amazing prizes. What, it's so great. Whatever the hell you are, submit your topic. In, re in recent history. <laughs> in recent <laughs> modern history. Um, yeah, that's how that works. Golly. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Remember in the last episode when I said guano? Then I was sitting at my desk and I was like, hey, Catherine, I made up a joke. You went, hello. Would you like to hear the joke? Yeah. Would you guys like to hear the joke? Yes. Please tell. Did you, hey, Jim, did you hear about the guy that ate all the guano? They say he was bat crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, That's right? a good joke. That was a good joke. I like it. I've got another joke that I made up, too. Maybe Are we'll you going to tell us? For, maybe we'll save that for a future episode. Okay. I like it.